Is it on the charter? <laughs> I think so. On your middle. And uh, try this. Uh, I suppose so, but I don't know. Okay. Yeah, let's see. As usually, they will say that it's like uh, as last week. As long as he until Friday, I will say if he propose something. I mean, the homework on Friday, it, there will be a homework for this week. Uh, it, unless there, I mean, on the weekends or Monday, there's no possibility. And even if he did so, he will also postpone the deadline for next Monday or next week. But to be frank, he's super busy this week, so I don't think he will. But we'll see. Yeah. Because we have I know. Yeah, maybe, maybe, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 
哦，这是一个 lab， 对，这是一个 laboratory， 就是你们不是在这个课上的，对吧？对。然后这个课的话，本身是在周二上课，然后在正常上课之外的话，还会组织一些 lab， 然后这些 lab 的话会补充一些课外知识，然后基本上是 on data mining 的，有的时候的话会。呃，以 lecture 为主，有的时候会以这个实践，像 R 啊或者 Python 为主。这节课的话，会一半一半，差不多这样。对，总体时间一个小时，差不多。And、uh, for those who are new here, and you can download the lecture slides and also the R program through this link. I'm not sure you can see this. Actually, it's the the repository that I shared last week. I mean, last time that I sh I showed. You can go to GitHub if you have tried before. If not, just Google GitHub and、uh, found the account name who is Yingjun Two and found this repository. And if you are using WeChat, I can also send you the link of the repository to WeChat. And if you have already enrolled in this class data mining class, you can also go to your Moodle, and there's a link. You can you can go to this online session, and uh, it's uh, it will helpful to to copy and to see what I'm doing on my own computer. And now, especially for the second part, when I'm doing the R code, you can try yourself. And、uh, it's already 43, and we will wait two more minutes, and we will get started. And before that. Um, better, you can better download the slides, the October 11 LR lecture PDF, and also the LR lab、uh, R. We will use these two files. And if you haven't yet installed R or R Studio, you are free to install that. That would also be helpful and useful in this class.
Okay, it's 45 now. Uh, we'll just get started. And uh, first of all, welcome. Uh, this lab is not mandatory, and it's only, I know it's your personal time, so feel free to join and feel free to leave as long as you have some emergency or any according to your own plan. And for this lab, there will be no assignment and it's not mandatory to the courses, so just feel free. And I'm highly expecting your respondents after this lecture, and we will see how to improve, and uh, maybe you don't need it, need it, and maybe in future we will not hold this, but uh, we will see how it goes, okay? And in today's lecture, uh, basically two parts of that. The first part is on the lecture, brief lecture on linear regression, and the second part we're using R to apply linear regression and see how it goes and to uh, to some better or deeper application part about that. And uh, first of all is about the linear regression. And uh, before that, I'd like to see a survey or a demography on the students or the audience, and especially for those in-class students. And is there anyone who has enrolled the 590DT, which is data mining class, please raise your hands. Data mining class, okay. And uh, is there anyone who have enrolled like a 542, uh, which is desk class? Please raise your hand. Okay, cool. And uh, I hear some sounds from the online students. Maybe no, okay, yeah. Uh, the reason I asked before, because this will be related to the course, but even you don't have the background, it's fine. And if there's anything that you are, is unclear, please feel free to interrupt me anytime, okay? First of all, is there anyone who doesn't know the linear regression? No? Okay, that would be easy. And in this case, uh, here, first of all, I give some definitions. And uh, although this seems, they might seem very simple or very, uh, relative simple to you, but better to have another mind on that. And in this in this class, not only in this model, we were always trying to uh, to force form a function like this. We can see that y is our uh, our response, our outcome, and this is our, des uh, our desired variable. And here for x1 to xp, there, there are also variables, or in Weka, there are so-called the attributes. And, uh, and here uh, we can also demand them like the features and predictors. And they are all like this. And um, all the models are using the same thing. We can have the y and all the x, they are all data. But the only difference in different models are the F here and the E here. And the F here is the different models. For example, in this case, it is using the linear regression, which means we are trying to have the regression from all through X1 to XP using the linear combination and trying to do the prediction through all of this for Y. And another important thing is E here. E is the error, because we can never accurately predict the y here. What we get is always a y hat. A y hat. Y hat is always equal to the f above. And we can always see the difference between y and the y hat. And the difference is the e, is the error. Clear? And uh, by defining E, where there are different functions or the different things, and uh, we can have the different assumption for that. 
And in this very easy or the simple uh, examples, uh, let me see. We can see that we assume E has a, we can assume that E have a, Z, a mean zero and variance uh, about the sigma square. And in this case, we just assume that E has a normal distribution and uh, to post for or deduct any uh, features or the, or the characters from E. And in other cases, especially in the CS department or stats departments, when for the fur, uh, further models or the harder models, they are trying to have the different models for E. And uh, they have different names for that. One of the name, uh, important name is the loss function. And loss function, uh, we will talk about this uh, later today. And uh, how to define the loss function is a way we're trying to first to uh, constrain how large we can we can give for the error. And second is uh, how we are want to in, uh, input some other constraints for this maximum or for this estimation. Although these concepts are very basic, but always remember to have an open mind for this because all the very famous ideas or algorithms are from these things. For example, in this case, you may understand the y or the x as numerical numbers. And we, you might have the, when I'm trying to give you a construct of all the data, I think, uh, first of all, you may have a matrix and uh, Uh, you may have an uh, just uh, just like the y here. You may you may have that. For example, you can see this table, right? And uh, this is the table that we will discuss later in this. And here we will see for all the x and y, they are all just column of data. And uh, uh, easily speaking or obviously speaking, they are just a numeric and you will think about that. But in other algorithm, this data could no longer be numeric, but also be categorical. And also in further text mining data, all these features can be even worse. Okay, so some students are, one of my research interests is uh, natural language processing. They were trying to analyze the text and when analyzing tests, they will use the, the words or the other tests as the feature. So let's go back to these slides. When we see features or the predictors x1 to xp, they can no longer or not only be the numeric numbers, but all the other type of data. Am I clear? OK, and let's go back to linear regression. As we discussed, this is the core part or the core function of the linear regression. And here, uh, we, we have the x, uh, x1 through xp and y as the data, but what we do know is the, the beta through beta 0, beta 1 to beta p, and also the error. And here, the first thing that we try uh, during for, uh, building the model, we are trying exactly getting those beta parameters. And here, beta 0 is quite different uh, because it is the intercept. And we can see that through beta 0 to beta p, there are actually p plus one parameters that we are going to get. This is important because remember that we are only having p features, but we are going to extract p plus one parameters. Am I clear? And that's why in future, when we're calculating the degree of freedom, we need to uh, minus p plus one. We will talk about that later, okay? And here, uh, in this case, we just put it simple. We have an assumption that E has the mean of zero and there were a variance of the sigma squared. And if you are taking a data mining class, I already told you that uh, for data mining, or in this case, is this classification problem. We are actually trying, what we have is the data, and we are trying to train the model through the training data, and then we are using the model to 
to apply to the testing data, and then we are trying to get the best estimation, right? And here is uh, just reduce or repeat what we just said. And here, uh, in our class or I think in our department, the courses will never go very hard or very deep in the math, math uh, mathematics, but for each model to make it realistic or reproducible, we will all have the math as a background. And this is the, the math or the uh, matrix representations for the linear regression. And uh, if you are unfamiliar with that, we can look at that in detail. On the left, this is the Y. Uh, in the training data, it is known. So we have an array of data as Y1 to Yn on the left. And on the right, this is the matrix that we are interested in. And uh, if you are in, uh, familiar with the metric calculation, we're actually trying to disformulate into these three parts. The first part is X. The second part is beta. The third part is E. And here in the coordinates, it is the, the dimension of the three metrics. For the X, as we mentioned, is N times P plus one because need an extra one array for the E. Okay, see what I mean? And also for the beta, they are the parameters that we are trying to obtain. And for the E, they are the errors. And uh, for now, I think you are using your laptops, but to make, to have a deeper understanding of this, you'd better use pen and papers to write this and better to memorize this and to resize this. And this will give you a deeper understanding. This will, uh, unless understanding this and uh, re memorize this, you can hardly understand this algorithm or most uh, very deeply, okay? And here, uh, we are, I'm not sure, uh, for next week we might talk about the feature engineering, but uh, before that, we are trying to actually talk about uh, the data and the relationship between data and the features. Here, in uh, both X and beta, we have the parameter P, right? P is the feature. And uh, in class, we always talk about what is the good number of feature? And sometimes someone will told you that maybe the more feature, the better, because we have maybe more accurate model, which is not always true. And uh, sometimes a uh, lot more feature, more, uh, larger number of features may means first, it will be a large burden on the calculation or the computation. And the second, sometimes there will be the problem of overfitting and it will go to a smaller, uh, error of the training data set. However, when it goes to the uh, testing data set, it is no, not always true. You see what I mean? Uh, yes. And actually this, uh, this feature and the next slides are actually talking about, we can see the green, uh, you can see here, this is the, the green matrix, which is for the X. And this is the, the red matrix, which is the beta. And still remember what those uh, two uh, matrix uh, stands for, right? And uh, I, in these two slides, I make a distinction on the length or on the size of these two matrix. What does that mean? That actually means whether the data self or the data set itself is larger than the parameter you, say, you set. For example, uh, I have 100 data set or 100 observations, but in fitting, I set 200 parameters. And in that case, that will be in this case. You see what I mean? The green is the X, but it is lesser than, or I mean the narrower uh, for the dimension than the beta which is our parameters. And in that case, that will be a problem because that will go to a rank deficiency. And uh, uh, everyone knows the rank deficiency, right? Anyone who doesn't know? 
Okay, yeah, <laughs> that would be good. Uh, we're trying to talk about the matrix, and this is a matrix, for example, we talk about A. And we were trying to do uh, the, uh, for example, we are trying to have an N times N matrix, and we supposed the rank, uh, the rank of A is after calculation, we will see how many rows are independent or the perpendicular to each other. And if they are not, after the linear transformation, we can cross them out. And instead, we can get zero in the end. And in this, tra in this linear transformation, the rank will be the same. See what I mean? Yeah. Or I can also give a uh, easy, uh, easy things. Now we have a second, uh, this, uh, this symbol means now we are talking about the two dimensional feature of universe and we are having X1 and X2 as all the X. And here I have three data sets. The first one is one zero. The second one is zero one. And the third one is one one. And in this case, we can notice that the third variable can be actually linear combination of the first two. You see what I mean? For example, is we can do a simply uh, add or suspension of the first two and we can get the third one. In this case, although uh, we can write it to a three by two matrix, however, the rank of that is only two. You see what I mean? And here, when we are talking this A, we suppose it has the full rank of n here because it's n times n. However, uh, after the linear transformation, we will find maybe only the first few lines is independent or useful to us, and the rest of us can be relevant or equal to all zeros. In that case, it will go to the uh, rank deficiency. Sorry for the handwriting. Though. I suppose you can see that. Yeah, this is the rank deficiency. And uh, uh, as I see, the reason I mentioned this up, it uh, because it will for sure happens when your parameter, the number of your parameter is more than your data sets. Okay, but this is not really a big problem. First of all, in current world, the big data is not not a big problem. So we have a mountains of data. So data is usually in the size of the millions or even more. And the parameters will usually be uh, commonly like hundreds of or tens of. So usually the data will be more the, than the number of parameters. So in that case, it will be it will be in the previous slides like this, right? The green is larger or the longer than the parameter numbers. So in this case, it's good, but only in the other case. And in the other case, when the parameter is too much, and uh, I suppose next uh, lecture we are going to track about that or talk about that. For in that case, the parameter is too much. We are trying to trim down the number of parameters. And then we are using the feature selection or feature engineering. We are only using those useful features. And that is a way to solve those problems. Okay. And another problem is to, uh, to solve the rank deficiency problem is to generate some fake data set. And we will talk about that also later. And that case, we will have like Monte Carlo uh, uh, simulations, and that is the way to generate some randomized data. Or we can also use some data that already generated by the raw data set, which is also another way to deal with that problem. But we will talk about that next lecture, okay? Okay, and uh, after this linear algebra, we will go to this thing. This is the least square estimations. Uh, first of all, we can all see that, uh, maybe you have all heard that. Uh, anyone, uh, have anyone heard of RSS before? Raise your hand. The residual sum of squares? Not all for you? Okay, we can still talk about that. Uh, if you haven't heard about that, uh, you should hear about that because this is very famous. And uh, previously we talked about that we have the y as the true data with the true uh, variable for the, for the data. 
and we always have the y hat as our prediction. And uh, we always wonder, we always have the error, which is the e, uh, and which equals to, this is an equal, sorry, I, I it. <laughs> sorry. Yep. Uh, e equals y minus y hat. And uh, we always wonder uh, how to minimize the, the e, and especially for all the data sets, right? And in this case, we will have this thing. And here, this, remember, RSS is only one of the ways that we are trying to mirror E, okay? And here we can see that E goes to sigma, here just the E square, right? All that in the uh, parentheses is just the E, and uh, it will be squared. And here, basically, it goes to, and in this figure, it goes to the, a geographical meaning of the data or of the RSS. For each red dot, as I'm circling in the data, this is the true Y. And uh, the point that on the platform, I don't think I can point it out, but it's around here. This, or I can show it here. That will be easier. Red dot is the Y. And the circle on the plane is, is our prediction. And this plane, actually, this is our prediction model. Everyone clear? OK. And uh, the error is actually the, diff, uh, the distance between the dots of the true value and of our prediction. And the so-called RSS is a way to calculate the, all the E. We can see that for each data, we have, uh, yeah, uh, it's fine, yeah. You will see that for each data, you will have a distance or the error. And there, for n dots or for n data, there will be an error or n distance, right? And as I mentioned, we are taking the sum of the square of E. This is one of the, one of the way that we narrow this distance. And similarly, we can also using like using the absolute value of the E and taking the sum to mirror all of them. And uh, maybe uh, I noticed that some of you haven't heard of this before, so I may have an easy question for you, for especially for those who haven't heard of this before. Why we didn't use the, the first order sigma E directly to mirror the error? Because we just use E, um, they will just Exactly, exactly. For example, in this case, and uh, yeah, for those who haven't heard of this lovely, especially online students, the answer, the student answer is that if I'm using the one other linear combination of that, uh, the data, uh, the, der uh, the error might be either positive or negative. That's by positive, I mean uh, the true value of y is larger than the y predicted. And in the other case, uh, the y, actually y, uh, might be smaller than the y predicted. And in those cases, uh, the error can be either positive or negative. And, and by taking a direct sum, those things will be in, uh, eliminated each other. And in that case, that will not turn out or uh, proving a true distance uh, or evaluating this model. So at least, when it is first order, we are act, uh, actually using the absolute model for that, but more easily using, we are using the second order for that, which is the RSS here. And, but again, uh, this is not, uh, although this is the most uh, commonly used, uh, the mirror form, mirror model, but this is not, everyone likes it. And in future models, especially like SVM, I think, and other, some, so, uh, some advanced base method, we are talking about some other mirrors uh, to talk about or uh, estimate the model, okay? Any questions so far? Okay, good. And uh, yeah, this is uh, just talking about this. And uh, yeah. So 
again, by selecting the model, we are actually trying to select those all the beta using this method. We are trying to minimize the RSS of beta. Uh, look, the, look at this formula very uh, in detail. This RSS is a function not really uh, relative to x, but also, uh, but actually at beta. Beta is the, the parameters that we are trying to obtain or to extract from this function. Okay, and uh, again, RSS is a way to better extract the set of beta through beta zero to beta p, and this is only one way to get this. And uh, here comes the problem. And uh, we are trying to get, okay, we can go to the previous one. We, are, we have the RSS, which is the function of beta. And uh, we are actually trying to get a minimum number of this and by choosing different number of combination of beta. What is the way to get those? And uh, if you have already taken some math course, you will find a method which is called to take the derivative of this. When this goes to zero, when this goes to zero, this means the function RSS will go to is at least at the limit, uh, it could be either maximum or the minimum. And we need, we can also uh, clarify and justify and to make sure that it is the minimum. And in this case, uh, is our, what we are needed, okay? And uh, if you are now familiar with that, you can talk to me after class or, yeah, this is a, a basic uh, theorem, theorem on, the, on the algebra. And here is how we are actually calculating these things. Still remember why we need to calculate this is because we are trying to get RSS, the true minimum of that. So we are trying to take the derivative of this to, uh, to beta. And then we make this to equal, uh, equals to zero. And by solving this problem, and uh, this is pretty similar to, uh, you, can, you all know that how to take the derivative to x squared, right? For example, this goes to, to x. So everyone clear with this, right? Yeah, and if you're clear with this, this is pretty similar. Although here, the uh, the y uh, minus x beta squared is a matrix, but it goes to pretty similar. Although there's a little difference on that. In this case, we also take down the first uh, two, and then y minus x beta. And here, because we are taking the derivative of the beta, so here there's another pra parameter or the coefficients, which is negative x. We are also taking that out. So when I, we are trying to calculate this, is go to this, right? And uh, we can notice that because this is the, the matrix calculation, it is a little different and the uh, uh, one dimensional function. So we need to make them comparable or calculatable. So we are trying to see that for this one, they are n times one for the dimension. And uh, to make it, we can never use a x itself is a n times p, uh, p plus one. However, to make them uh, conductible or timesable, so we need to use a transform of that, and in this case, they are calculable. So what I mean? So the results for that is here. And to make that equals to zero, and we can calculate this is the, the beta. Okay, this is the mathematical background of the uh, linear regression based on the least uh, square estimation, okay? Uh, but good news about this is that we can 
uh, we can forget about it or we can use R or uh, Python and other softwares to directly obtain those coefficients because they have already been written in the program. Okay, but to understand that deeper, you need to understand this is why or how they are from. Okay. And uh, again, in this case, we can notice that uh, for all the uh, beta we can uh, obtain, it only uh, relative to all the x and all the y. So that is the whole part or the whole benchmark through the data set or the training data sets. Okay. And then after get the beta, we get the model and we model we are trying to predict for the testing data. Okay. And uh, here, uh, here now suppose we successfully get all data, and uh, uh, we can notice that uh, here the beta for all the beta we using the hat here because it is a least square estimation beta, okay? And for all the beta with all the beta and all the x we can get our prediction of y. And here we are using the y hat as a prediction. And uh, the reason I'm using the uh, star on the x and y is because this time we are actually dealing with the problem in that text data. Okay, for the test data, only x is given and y is not there. So all the x are actually new data. And uh, for the y, is only through our calculation. Is could be true, could be could, could not. Okay, and we are trying to get those photos. And here we have the uh, fitted value, and uh, also we get the residue. Residue here you can also understand in the error, but it's not really error because we don't know the true y, so it also means the residue. And so we have the RSS. This is more like a conclusion of what we did before. And here uh, is the thing of the way that we're trying to uh, modify or the evaluate the model. We are trying to evaluate error variance. Here, for each model, there are different ways to model those things. We can see that we are using RSS. And also uh, n minus p minus one, which we discussed before, this is actually the day of the model, right? Because there are n data sets, and we are actually using p plus one coefficients. So taking that off, we are having the degree of freedom as this. So when we are trying to make the estimate or the evaluate the model, we are calculating the variance at this. We are calculating RSS and divided by n minus b minus one. Okay, in this case. And uh, yeah, the case that uh, we talk about next week. Uh, okay. Any questions so far? This is about the next part, and then going to the third part. See no questions. I will see whether or not there are some questions online for the online students. Students, are still there? And uh, do you have any questions? Okay, uh, if not, we are going to the R part. And then R program is this direct uh, repository. And if you haven't found this yet, you can find this uh, through github.com, the uh, uh, gen2 and is590dt. And then you can find the lab October 11th in reaction. Then will be found.
And if you have already downloaded the R file, you can open your R or R Studio. For me, I am not a studio or so run this. And uh, uh, note the time is really the night now. I think I can cover the full R program yet. So I will cut it off at uh, five sharp. And uh, uh, my for this uh, next class, or we can also talk about that if you have any questions. Okay, we will see what we cover. Any program, and we are actually using a data set. Uh, first of all, I'm um, like to do a search on our YouTube. Uh, or for any of uh, you have already using R or R Studio before, please raise your hands. Okay, pretty good. I think most of you have already installed this or uh, kind of accustomed to that. And uh, there a question? Really, that means a question. Uh, no, okay, it's fine. And uh, for uh, since you are already familiar with that, so that will be easy. Uh, the data that I'm showing today for this linear regression is that uh, Boston housing price data. And this is pretty famous in the machine learning. If you are really interested in the data mining or machine learning, there should be some common sense, especially on the data sets. And this is one of them. And the other data could be the iris data, for example, those flowers, right? So you remember 150 data? And from that, also the Titanic data. And that is about that. That Yeah, that is what you hear. This is the famous uh, shape Titanic. And uh, there's also a census on that. I think there are more than uh, more than thousands of the customers. There are some data on age, like the on the maybe on the occupation, maybe on the salaries, things like that. And there's you can also do an analysis on that. And the Titanic data is also a famous data on the data mining. OK? And there might be also some others on deep learning, like some images, but uh, it's not that relevant to this class. So we'll just ignore that. And in this case, this data is very famous. So you do not need to download it. And you can, in R, you can directly call that by using the library mass. And uh, after seeing that you are familiar with, with this, so uh, I don't need to teach you how to install this library. If you are not familiar with that, come to me for sure. I can show you or demo you how to install the library mass and how to play with the data, OK? And after getting the library, we can get this. And for some of you may already know that, when we put a question mark before the data set, we can get a brief introduction on the red on this Boston. And uh, when using the head, we can actually get the first six rows of the data sets. And here we can see that there are actually a couple of columns. Actually, there are 14 columns and the first rows about that. OK, this gives you a very brief or very general idea about that. And when using the dim or the dimension of the Boston, we can see that there are 506 rows or the instance and 14 uh, columns or the attributes. And one of them is our target, uh, target variable, which is our Y here. And in this case, it's the, the last one. And here, I'm uh, all those green parts are my comments. You can, I just list it here to, to give you a clear mind what those attributes are for. And uh, also, I'm trying to offer some idea to do some transformation on the data. I, I have already mentioned in the data cleaning class, these steps is so-called the data pre-processing or data cleaning. And uh, we can see some uh, transformations like using the logarithm transformations. Now I have a question why they need to do some transformations or cleaning for those data. Why not use the data directly? Any ideas? Mm, let's see. 
Well, this is super important, so I do want to spend some time on this. So you remember, when you have a data set, no matter what project it is about, maybe it's in whatever class, always take a look at the data. Okay, before that, we can take a look at the sum. Uh, you're already familiar with the summary. Uh, so by using the summary, we can get uh, the maximum and the minimum and distribution of the data sets, right? And for example, here we have the brief things of that. We can see that for the first variable, which is crime, and uh, the minimum is around zero, the maximum is around 88 or 100. And the second is goes to a similar range. And when it goes to the, uh, we will see another, maybe the fifth one, which is the NOx. And although we are now sure about what it is about, but we can see the range is quite different, right? And here it goes to like from 0.3, around 0.3 to 0 0.8 or 0 0.9, right? If we are using direct, I mean, without any transformation or processing, but we are using directly the linear regression for those of them, there might be a large bias on two variables. You see what I mean? Because one of them is very large and the second or another one is very small. Although the coefficient can be like a hundred times larger, but the standard deviation or the without, norm uh, without normalizations, they should be inferred, right? For example, another example can be in each data set, there are some noise, right? And sometimes we trying to minimize this noise, but sometimes we don't really want to reduce those useful data sets. So that's why we are really wanted to, to do the pre-processing to enlarge those important but small data set, but try to get rid of those unimportant but just nonsense or noise data. Okay, and this is similar to feature selection. This is about the data selection. This is very important before you think. Okay, so this is a saying or the quotation in the field of uh, data mining or machine learning. You can use any models to train your model and get your prediction. But before that, the ceiling of the prediction will be the data set and uh, the feature selection. See what I mean? It means without a good data, no matter what model you are selecting, you, you are also you getting the garbage, or you can also see the, hear the saying that garbage in, garbage out. See what I mean? So data preparation is very, very important. According to all my own experience in, uh, in my internship and in my working experience, uh, although it's about the data analysis, about 70% of my time is doing the data pre-processing or data cleaning, okay? Okay, now, so that's why we are trying to use of that. And uh, we can see that uh, we are trying to do some transform. Also, uh, get some, we can see that after the transform, uh, now here is the, the new summary, and uh, we can see they are more comparable to each other, right? All of them are, for example, like less than 10. And uh, But again, uh, for sure, there's one of the column uh, that I have to mention you that are treated wrong, which is the, the, uh, the column number four, or the fourth column, which is chess. And here, chess, if we see that, we can see the minimum of it is zero, and the maximum is one. If you look in detail about this data, especially in this column, it is not actually numeric. There are only zero and one, which is, means it is categorical. You see what I mean? But in R, by default, it will treat it as numeric. So uh, again, in your real playing with the data, you will again look in detail about the data and to make sure whether or not the program or the software are treating it correctly, okay. And here we also notice that for the last column here, I rename it to Y and uh, which two are interests. And here, this is uh, again, my favorite has mentioned in the class, this is about the EDA and I have the such figures. R is super cool 
with very simple quotation or commands, only pairs, and it offers a figure like this. And this is uh, the scatter plot and uh, among each two of the variables. And we can, through this EDA uh, or very basic analysis, we can see how it distributes and how two variables uh, correlate with each other. Okay. And uh, time is up, so uh, last but least, uh, we can use this uh, linear model feed and to get this and have the model and have the prediction. And uh, we will cover all of this uh, maybe in the following uh, lecture. And uh, to wrap up, and this lecture, we take the first part about the lecture, we take a actually abandon of time, talk about the mathematical background, especially for the linear aggregation calculation before this linear regression, we see that how to get those beta and how we, why it's important to get those beta and how to use those beta and our model to give the prediction and trying to minimize that and how to estimate or the evaluate the model, which is the, the variance, which is still remember RSS divided by the DOF. Okay, and here we also offer the R program to how to realize all of this. And uh, that is for this lab. And if you have any questions, feel free to come to me, ask questions, or email to me. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you.